Hello there, everybody. Dan Calloway here again, coming to you from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, something that isn't Linux Unix, but it is, in a way, and that is uh, the new Microsoft Edge web browser. Um, Microsoft has pretty much given up on its own version of Microsoft Edge for Windows. Uh, I don't think it, uh, it's, it didn't have the popularity, I think, that uh, Microsoft thought it was going to have. And so, I mean, it's still there. Uh, they haven't uh, removed it, but um, I don't think they plan on uh, improving it to any extent or, or providing uh, updates beyond an initial period, or remaining period, rather. But anyway, they, they have teamed up, though, with Linux, and uh, now they're providing a Microsoft Edge browser for Chromium. Um, uh, and it is uh, available for Windows uh, as well. Um, but uh, I'm using it right now, uh, the Microsoft Edge web browser for Chromium. Um, and right here is the website that you go to to get it. It's the www.microsoftedgeinsider.com. Um, and this is the English U.S. version. Um, so this is the website right here. Uh, it says, let's build together. Thanks for using Microsoft Edge and checking out what's coming up next. Take a look at our preview bills and let us know what you think so we can keep improving. Okay, so they're keeping it for Windows. They're just uh, improving it by making it for Chromium. Uh, and, uh, and I like it. Uh, I've been using it now for, oh, about a week. Uh, I really like it. I mean, I, I, it's actually, it made caused me to move away from the Firefox web browser, which um, I didn't think I was ever going to say, because the Firefox is a great web browser. I use it all the time. I do not use the Chrome web, uh, web browser, however, but I do use Firefox a lot, and, uh, and I probably will keep Firefox, but I like what I see here in the Microsoft Edge web browser for Chromium. There's a link here for download the dev channel for Windows 10. Uh, if you go to the more platforms and channels, it'll take you to this site right here, uh, and you can click on the download link. Uh, there are three different versions that you can try out. One's called the beta channel, which gets updated every six weeks. It says it's the most stable Microsoft Edge preview experience. Uh, it will be here soon, and after we've had a chance to look and improve in our other channels coming, this one's actually not here yet, coming soon for Windows 10. It's called the beta channel. Uh, the second one is the dev channel and it's updated weekly uh, and says our dev bills are the best representation of our improvements in the past week and they have been tested by the Microsoft Edge team and are generally more stable than Canary. So I, this is the one I, I grabbed right here, download for Windows 10 for dev channel. And then uh, the Canary Channel one is updated. This gets updated weekly. The Canary Channel gets updated daily. All right. So if you're cutting edge, you might want to go with the Canary Channel. So this is what I uh, want to see uh, what we're, we were working on yesterday. Canary will be released automatically almost every night to keep you up to date on our progress. So it's up to you what you want to, want to do. You can get it in other platforms. You can get it for Windows 8.1, Windows 8 even for Windows 7 and Mac OS as well. So you can get one for the Mac OS by downloading it from there. And then the Microsoft Edge Mobile, you can get it for iOS. I may do that for my iPhone. Um, did not realize this was available. Uh, I'm using Firefox right now on the iOS for iPhone, uh, which I don't particularly care for, to be honest. So I'll have to check out the Microsoft Edge Mobile and see how that goes uh, for the iPhone as well. And then you can get it for the Android. Uh, you can use the QR code here to get to the application, which is what I'll probably do. You can get a QR code reader on your iPhone or Android and then just scan this. Uh, you've, you've done this, I'm sure. Scan this QR code and it takes you right to the, to the app. And then there's some information down here below about what's new, Microsoft Store, Education, Enterprise, Developer, and Company. But uh, anyway, I got the dev channel, so I want to show you uh, some of the things in the dev channel here I really like. Uh, what it does is it uh, has a huge search the web, and I'm assuming this is Bing. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is. It doesn't say. But it does a great job. This, has got, this is the Bing right here, so I'm assuming this is the Bing search engine. Uh, so it does a great job. 
uh, every time you visit a site, if you want to click the plus sign here, you can uh, add whatever uh, quick dial that you want. I've got one for my Proton Mail that I go to here uh, so I can get my secure email based in Switzerland. Uh, here's the, the Bing um, site as well. Here's YouTube. If I click on YouTube, it takes me right to my YouTube site. Uh, if I can go back here, um, Hillsdale College, I've linked to that. Facebook, WebSDR, I do that, and PyVPN. If I click on PyVPN, it takes me to my PyVPN. It's kind of like a, a dashboard or a, a quick dial, if you're familiar with quick dial in Firefox, which is nice. Um, I kind of prefer, actually, the quick dial in Firefox. But I wish they could combine efforts here. Um, this is okay, uh, but I just like the quick dial better. All right, and then, of course, you've got your My Feed, your personalization, top stories, news, entertainment, sports, money, lifestyle, and health. Uh, and so My Feed is, you know, got stuff I look at, stuff I don't really look at. Not sure how it just determined what My Feed was, but it did. Um, but anyway, you can find a lot of stuff here, and this is familiar to you if you've used the web browser uh, Microsoft Edge before. Uh, so no big surprises here. I just like the way this this looks. It's uh, cleaner. It's um, I think it's a little larger in size. You can expand it even beyond this for text especially. Um, you've got a little uh, menu up here for port your favorites now. I don't use it because I'm not importing any favorites from an, another web browser into here. Uh, I might later, but right now I'm not. You've got the, uh, what's called a pancake, some people call it a hamburger, um, but for page settings up here. And if you click on that, you can go to a focus layout, an inspirational layout. I've got the informational layout, and then you can customize it. So let me, if I go to the, let's go to focused. What focus does is it focuses more on uh, the Microsoft stuff, okay? Uh, it doesn't have the nice, things that you had in the previous browser that I showed you. Um, lay, layout, which is, the, I believe, the informational, as I said. I like the informational. You can do the inspirational. Uh, you can personalize your news and, and more down here, which is a good thing. And then, of course, you can do the custom. Uh, show most visited sites. You can turn that on or off. If I turn it off, of course, that gets rid of these. Okay. Uh, if I turn it back on, they come back. Image of the day. If you turn that off, you just get a white background. I like the image of the day. I like that on Bing, by the way. Uh, and in Windows 10, if you turn on the theme for Bing, you get the image of the day there as well. I don't do that, but it, some people do like it. Um, if you want to show the feeds, you can click this, and it shows the feeds. All right. I don't particularly care for that, so I'm going to turn that off. Uh, and so that's some things that you can do there. If you come up here to the... Uh, Three dots, and I don't know what that's called. I know it's got a name, but I don't know what it is. I call it the ellipsis. There you go. This is settings and more. If you click on that, you've got a whole host of things here, like most browsers have nowadays. You can select a new tab here, or Control T, new window, or Control N for new, uh, new private window, Control Shift N. Um, if you want to bring up a private session, you can do that there, and uh, it's no guarantee that you're not going to be tracked. Uh, with a private session, but it's, it is more private. It does offer a lot more privacy. Um, I've got this set for 110%. I can tone it down if I want to or bring it up if I want to do that, you know, to 150% or more. Uh, I like 110%. My eyes are getting old, so 110% is better. If I want to uh, go full screen, I can hit that and go full screen. If I want to get out of it, uh, I can go back and hit F11 and get back out of it again. Um, come down to favorites, and then you can manage your favorites here uh, by just going that, click on that, and you can search for your favorites or your other favorites. See, I didn't import anything, didn't add any favorites here, so you know it's not going to do me any good really to do that. Um, if I go back, um, I can add this page to favorites. I can add open pages to favorites. Show favorites bar. Import. It seems to have a, some more stuff, a lot more than Firefox does. Uh, if I come down to history, here's my complete history. If I can manage my history. I can clear my browsing data here by selecting this. 
I can select the time range. Now most browsers have this nowadays. Uh, last 24 hours, last seven days, last four weeks, all time. Uh, browsing history, you can clear that. If you uncheck it, you won't clear it. Download history, the same. Cookies and other data, site data, if you uncheck it, you won't get rid of the cookies. Cached images and files. Of course, this speeds up your browsing, so why you would want to clear your cache. Um, the only time I think you could want to clear your cache is if you've got something that's happening that you need to get rid of, a recurring issue in the browser, uh, maybe a website you visited uh, that takes you to a particular page. You don't want to go there anymore. It's been cached. So obviously when you click on uh, the link, it's going to take you to the cache page first and then look in the background for any uploads it needs to bring into that browser experience. Uh, or if you're running a, an Apache web server or something like that, you would might want to clear the cache from occasionally and get rid of uh, some things going on there. But other than that, I, I leave that checked um, or unchecked rather when I do a clearing. Uh, I usually clear the browsing history, the download history, leave the cached images and files alone. I leave the passwords alone, the autofill alone, and the site permissions alone. And then the hosted app data, take it or leave it, I guess. Um, you've got some uh, buttons over here you can press to turn things on and off um, as well. Okay. Then under settings here, you've got profiles, appearance, you know, uh, on startup, we'll go back over there and we'll look at that in a moment here. And so let's go to apps, manage apps here, extensions. You can manage all of your extensions here. I don't have any currently loaded. I can get extensions from the Microsoft Store. I can turn on the developer mode if I want to do that so that I can get um, an experience that if I was a, a DevOps for the browsers, I could uh, work with that better, uh, get a pack extension and that kind of thing. I'm going to turn that off. Allow extensions from other stores other than the Microsoft Store. If I want to do that, then I click the Allow Extensions from Other Stores. I have not done that at this point, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And let's cancel that. And that's turned off now. Uh, if I go back uh, to print, I can print a page if I want to do that. I've got a lot of uh, functionality here on the left-hand side for printing, setting it up for the printer so you don't have to get into the the actual printer interface on your computer. Um, so let's go back to uh, cancel that. Okay, and come back here to find on page, which is nice. If you click in here, something, whatever page you're on, it will locate it on the page, which I think is nice. Um, read aloud. This will actually read. So if you're in your new in your uh, email, you can do the read aloud. It'll actually read the mail to you. Uh, more tools, you can do save page as, uh, cast media to device, so you can cast it to your smart TV. It's right looking for devices right now. If you've got Bluetooth turned on, which I do not, um, then it would find it, uh, but I don't have it turned on, so it didn't find anything. Um, under settings here, uh, you can go in, and that's all your settings for appearance. You know, I've got kadaza.com slash news is my homepage. Uh, which I like. Um, I'll actually show you what that looks like. It's going to eliminate that page. This is kadaza.com if you've never seen it. Um, it's a great start page for your web browsing and in here it's really wonderful. Uh, I've got it set for news because I've got the slash forward slash news here so it comes up to news first which is uh, one of the selections. It's in red right here. Okay. Um, so this is all the news, and here's a bunch of uh, things here for news. If I click like ABC News, you know, it's going to go directly to ABC News. This is a wonderful thing for a start page, but this isn't all there is to it. I mean, you've got shopping and travel and sports and games and movies and TV, computer and tech. If I do that, it changes all these tabs to tech-related, computer-related stuff. Uh, Internet and email, you know, it gives you... Uh, you know, a lot of the companies that support, you know, that are uh, uh, supporting uh, your internet service providership, like Verizon, you know, for telephone and Xfinity and Cox and AT&T and at Zero, Juno, Earthlink, Yahoo, Mail, uh, iCloud, that kind of thing. It's really wonderful. Uh, blogging, if you want, if you like blogging, here are a bunch of blogs that are popular, like The Verge. That's one I go to quite a bit for technology-related stuff. Um, 
So this is the Verge. And you can go down here to Tech. And if you want to see Tech uh, Mobile, you can just click on that. And it takes you to Mobile Focused Technology News. Okay, wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, and then you've got over here beauty blogs, family blogs, gaming, gossip, health. And then you've got a more option. If that's not enough, and oh my goodness, I just I don't understand why it wouldn't be. Then you've got all of this. You've got A to Z. You can go R, you know, and you've got all of this stuff here. Like for instance, rent a car. Uh, then you've got rent a car companies. Okay, on the web, online, Kadaza.com. Okay. Got to put that in as your as your homepage. It's a wonderful thing. So let's uh, let's go back to what we were doing. Um, you've got some extensions here, keyboard shortcuts. You can get more extensions for the Microsoft stores I mentioned. Uh, let's go out here to now um, settings again and come down to on startup uh, new tab page privacy and services. You've got a whole host of things you can do as far as privacy. Do not track. I keep that checked on. Uh, manage certificates, improve Microsoft products by sending data. Uh, I don't do that. Uh, clear browsing history now, so you can click what you want to clear. It'll take you back to that page I showed you earlier. Um, site permissions here, cookies, location, camera, microphone. Um, you can turn, you can delete those or keep those or whatever you want to do. Uh, so your privacy here in this particular web browser is really wonderful. I really like it. Uh, Microsoft has done a great thing here, uh, teaming up with Chromium. Downloads, here's the download location. You can change it. Uh, ask where you want to save uh, to save each file. Before downloading, you can turn that on and that will ask you every time. I just leave it to where it is. So they all go here, okay? Languages, uh, you've got English, but you've got a whole host of others. Uh, if I click on that, you can Display the Microsoft Edge in this language by checking that box right there. Um, you can remove it, whatever you want to do. Um, and, you know, to offer translations, you can turn this on. And sites that offer translations into other languages, let's say you're visiting a German site. For me, in my case, uh, it may offer translate that page in English. That's a wonderful thing to have. So you can turn spell checking on. And I've got the English dictionary selected. You can select other dictionaries, add or delete words. So it's just like, you know, your uh, word processor applications. Printing here, system. You can continue running background apps when Microsoft Edge is closed. Um, if you've started a download in the browser, if you've got this turned on, it will continue downloading. And then when it's finished, it'll let you know it's done. You can do reset your settings here. Uh, and then about the Microsoft Edge browser, it's up to date on this particular version, 77.0.22 or 223.0. This is the official dev build 64-bit for 64-bit Windows 10. I love it. It is really good. Here's the terms of use, privacy statement, and the Microsoft Web Agreement. Okay, so guys, uh, you got to check out the Microsoft Edge Insider Browser. You got some links up here that'll tell you more about it. Um, for add-ons and for support for enterprise, what's next and what's new. Uh, highly recommend you check out the Microsoft Edge browser for Chromium. Uh, it's really improved and it's a great thing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and uh, hit the like button there and make sure you hit that little bell over there so you get notified every time next to the subscribe button so that I can keep you up to date uh, when I upload videos. Hope you enjoyed this video and there'll be more like it to come. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day. Bye-bye.